Okay, guys, welcome to part two of our bronze bream fishing clinic. Okay, so what we require for part two, pool noodle, a pair of good mustard cutters, gummy stops, our anti-tangle free sleeves, as you can see there, some green beads, small as possible, red float, whether it be oval or round, doesn't make a difference, as long as it's about six mil, it's fine. Our bell sinker, I'm just gonna use a three ounce, a paper clip, FC fluorocarbon 35 pound, very, very important, 10 kilo maxima, number six power swivel, and of course our red bait holder number one. To start off with, all we're going to do is make a knot, and again, it's just a simple figure of eight, granny knot. So there we go. Start the granny knot, we take the first tag end, run it through the, the actual loop, second one through the loop, and again, third one through the loop. Very simple, there it is there. Going to pull it until it starts getting tight, there we go, lubricate, so you don't burn the fluorocarbon, pull tight. Okay. We're then going to take our green rubber bead. I'm going to have to put my glasses on, sorry. Thread it through, like so, just so we can show you. Our number six power swivel on. And again, if you can catch him, our second bead. We're then going to take the leader part and do our figure of eight once again. Our granny knot, so there it goes through once. There it goes through twice. And all we're gonna do is take our finger and just move the round part as we're pulling it tight, down. There we go. Okay, so that's what we basically got. It's gonna be a helicopter rig, so that's it there, lovely. Second step is to take our 10 kilo maxima and we take about 30 to 40 centimeters of it. Cut that off. We take our mustard number one, red bait holder, and all we're gonna do is stick it through like so and do our figure of eight. One, two, three times. Take the tag in through the back part of it. Let's give me a bit of a problem, there we go. Open it up to form your figure of eight, as you can see over there. A little bit of lubrication and slide it down onto the eye of the hook. Pull the knot tight and cut off the tag end of the nylon. Okay, so there it goes there. Then we're gonna take our red float, oval float, it doesn't make a difference, it's just six moles, it works extremely well, and the reason for that red float is it's an attractor, as well as floating our bait off of the bottom, making it more visual and easier for the bronze beam to see. It's pretty much a stop sign for a bronze beam as he's coming along to feed. Okay, so there it is there. We then take our gummy stop, and how the gummy stop works, is you take your nylon, you go through, I'm just gonna pull it down so you can see it clearly, through the loop part of the wire there. There's the loop, there's the gummy stop. So we stick it through the center, like so. Pull the gummy stop up until it's onto the actual nylon. Then what I like to do is just bend the line back. It just makes it easier for the gummy stop to actually go on. A bit of lubrication, never hurt anybody, and what we do is we just take our fingers and we just push it onto the nylon like that. You can see as I'm pushing, it's coming on. There's the wire, there's the nylon. And as I pull, there we go. There's the gummy stop on the nylon and you basically slide him down. The reason we use the gummy stop is to stop the float from going all the way down your line to where your swivel is. And then your bait sits there in the, the weed 
and your float sits up here. So that's why we use the gummy stop, just to stop that float from going down your line. Okay. We then take our anti-tangle free sleeve. We've got our quarter one here and we thread it through the center, pushing it up. So there's our quarter anti-tangle free sleeve. We then take our second part of it, which was our leader come swivel part. We stick it through the eye of the swivel, the power swivel. And, and again, we just tie it on with a figure of eight. Very quick, very easy. Okay, open it up. There's our figure of eight. Wet it, slide it down, pull tight, and cut off the tag end. Take our quarter anti-tangle free sleeve and slide it up over the eye onto the actual body of our size six power swivel. So that's pretty much what we're doing. Now, we're gonna take our bell sinker, and I love these things to bits because they work so well, and we're gonna flatten the top and the bottom. The reason we do that is when we're actually fishing for bronze bream and you're over a sandy area with scattered rocks, is you wanna throw it, pull it until your sinker actually gets to where there's a bit of rock formation and it'll go and sit against it. Obviously it's 30 centimeters away, it's gonna be floating right next to the rock, it makes it more visual, easier for the fish to find. Now, when you actually retrieve, with a flat sinker, it comes to the surface easy. It does not get stuck as easily as a egg sink, a bell sinker, something like that there. These sinkers, unfortunately, because of the big head, they do tend to stick a lot easier. That's why we use our bell sinkers. Now I'm gonna flatten it, I'll show you how we do it. You can either use a hammer and hit it on that side and that side, or you can stick it in a vise. I'm just gonna stick it in a vise here, show you how we do it. Okay guys, so basically all we do is we just tighten it up like that, and push it further down, like that. Okay, so there we go. All I've done is stuck it in the vise and flattened the actual sinker. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna go slide along the bottom until it gets to the rock or the reef or wherever it is that you're actually fishing. The greatest place of resistance, which is normally the rocks, and it'll sit like that. The minute you pull, this comes straight up out of the water. You don't get stuck as easy. And I'm just gonna do this quickly. Show you the whole trace, the completed trace. And we attach it with a figure of eight. It's as simple as that. Slide it down, cut the tag end. And there we go, guys. There is our red bait holder with our sinker and our normal float. Now, the red bait holder works in such a way that it's got little barbs on the back. So when you're using baits like cracker, prawn, um, swimming prawns, any soft baits, these little barbs actually hold on a lot better than, for instance, a chino hook, which is rounded, it has no barbs. So that will hold the bait on a lot better. It's also a longer shank. So for prawn baits, it works extremely well. Okay. Guys, okay, here's just a little tip for you. Um, out there, because you're making 10 traces, eight traces, whatever it might be, every day for catching bronze bream, what we do is we take a pool noodle. We cut a groove in it, like so. Quick and easy to show you. For storage purposes, this stuff, this little thing works like a dream, this little pool noodle. So what we do is we take a hook, stick it in. We just carry on wrapping around.
Like so. There we go. Then what we do is we take a paper clip. I'm just going to open this paper clip. Cut it. Like that. And now you've got a little pin. So all we do with that little pin part of it, is stick it in over the nylon, push it down, and it's as simple as that. When you want to use it, again, all you do is you pull out the paper pin, tie that to your leader, and voila. Take your hook off, tie your sinker on, and you're good to go. This is part two of our bronze bream um, trace and bait clinic. What we're using is a langoustine. You can use sand prawns. We need our kingfisher thin latex cotton, and that's the important part here. Um, we've got a chocker hammer and a very sharp knife. Just take our trace, and I'll just go through it again. Here's our trace that we're going to be using. Simple 1-0 bait holder, and it's got the barbs on the back with our float and our gummy stop. Take our langoustine. Open it up, crack it from the front side where the feet are. You just crack it like this and it opens up nicely. There we go, there we go. And you should be able to pull all the skin off nicely. There we go. You can use crayfish as well as another bait source for doing this. This langoustine is lovely and oily, thin bait. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take our knife, just butterfly it slightly. Take our chocker hammer just to soften it up. And that allows more of the flavor to get out. More of the flavor to be exposed. There's our red bait holder. I'm just gonna pull it down so we can actually bait it up. And with this, we actually bait up on the actual hook shank. So there's our chocker, uh, chocker or langoustine. We then take our thin kingfisher latex cotton. And we, we are cottoning it up around the actual shank of it, that area there. So let's do it. Remember to keep this hook as exposed as possible for a better hook set. Straighten him out, there we go. And there is our prawn come crayfish come langoustine bait on a red bait holder. It's a long, thin bait. Obviously the bream will come along, feed on it, and eventually he works his way down to the actual point part pulls you down and you can hit. Let's just move the gummy stop down like it should be. There we go. Remember to do that. <laughs> okay, so there's our langoustine bait. Simple as that, guys. There we go. On the helicopter rig. Ready to go.